Good day everyone! We are the Group 1 from BSBA HRN21 and what we are about to discuss is the Chapter 1, the BPO Revolution. Here are the presenters. So the first presenter would be Ms. Yuriko Aguilar. So yung una pong i-discuss is yung business process outsourcing is defined simply as the movement of business processes from inside the organization to an external service provider. BPO is the process of hiring another company to handle business activities for them ranging from data processing, back office support, recruitment, payroll, sales, customer service, or technical support to telemarketing and the like. So, meron pong limang BPO international hotspots na nag-emerge po. Ito po yung India, China, Mexico, United States, saka po yung Philippines. Each of these countries has a complex economy that span the range of business activities, but from a BPO perspective, they have comparative advantages in the specific function cited. Thank you, Ms. Aguilar. So, our next presenter is Ms. Amable Angeline. Good afternoon. I'm going to discuss a socio-technical innovation. Socio-technical innovation implies a process of systematic change, both in the productive structure and in the relations between actors inside the system with technical and behavioral implication, which affects production, distribution, and consumption. BPO transcends IT origins. Business process outsourcing has evolved far from the IT-specific roots and now encompasses nearly every business processes. Business process outsourcing is a socio-technical business innovation that provides a rich new source of competitive advantage. By socio-technical, we mean that business process outsourcing requires skillful management of people and technology, hardware, and software. The next topic is human factors and technology issues. Business process outsourcing is one of the interdisciplinary workplace innovation that demands a diverse set of skills to be successful. When implementing a BPO project, it requires a focus on several human factors within the organization, initiating the project and within the outsourcing vendor. When we say human factors, it is the science of people at work, or concerned with the understanding of human capabilities and then applying this knowledge to the design of equipment, tools, systems, and process of works. Some of the human factors examples are Reassuring staff of their role in the company, training people on the new way of doing business, compatibility of systems between the PPO buyer and vendor, data and system security, and etc. Thank you for your presentation, Ms. Amable. So the next presenter would be Ms. Sheila Tejano. Hello everyone, I'm Sheila Tejano and I'm going to discuss about the driving factors. BPO has emerged from a set of driving factors that have been intentionally converged in this time to enable the shifting of work to its lowest cost or highest cost quality provider, regardless of where the provider is physically located. Let us now discuss about the driving factors. We have business specialization, education attainment, educational attainment, internet security, online analytic process, inexpensive data storage, and lastly, broadband internet. First, let me discuss about educational attainment. United States still dominates the world with a quality of higher education that is offered, but the rest of the world is not behind. As you can see in the comparison of the Asia and U.S. technical education, there are a greater number of Asians pursuing technical degree than Americans. They recognize that the business world increasingly appreciates and utilizes their new abilities. This is the reason why U.S. firms are looking for abroad outsourcing Asia to seek and use the best available talent that fits the organization's budget wherever the talent may reside. Next is broadband internet. So, what is broadband internet? It is refers to the growing pipeline capacity of the internet, allowing larger chunks of information to flow 
with fever congestion issue. When internet speeds are in the range of 2 megabyte per second, the term is used as broadband. They predict that by 2010, they will be 1.5 billion computers with broadband connections. Kung dati ay dial up lang yung ginagamit nila, now naman is broadband. Workers in different countries can share data, which is an important factor in BPO. While consumers can surf the web for the latest bargains. As the exhibit, as the exhibit 1.4 represents na pinapakita yung mga bansang nanguna sa paggamit ng DSL, DSL broadband. In addition, broadband penetration is driven by the creative and business behaviors of users. The research from the Pew Pew Internet and American Life Project Fund that broadband users are extraordinarily active information gatherers, media users, and content creators. Next is inexpensive data storage. Storage of data is most critical issue for business. One danger of moving the work to the third party is the loss of organization learning. When an employee handles the related transaction internally and over time can discern and adapt to specific patterns or trend. Some of these patterns concern customer or competitor's behavior which is very important to the business. But with the inexpensive, nearly infinite data storage space available today. This obstacle has been largely overcome. As file cabinets gave way to floppy disks, punch cards, magnetic tapes, disks, and CDs, storage has gone from scarcity to commod commodity. Technical ad advances have driven down costs and limitless cyberspace storage capacity now en en enable files to be retrieved wherever and whenever. Possible. In the past, where storage is only limited, it also affects the copies that can be made, as well as the access. The elimination of these barriers to data storage has enabled new ways of thinking and about what is possible in the structure and produce of the workplace. Next is about analytic software. Software is a major source of business in BPO industry. It is invented as a tool as a tool for us to work with. Software has increasingly been designed to perform for work perform a work for us. Software tools that perform analytic tasks are one expert system, two decision support system, and artificial intelligence. Business analysis tasks were formerly the domain of human logis logicians, administrators, and executive decision makers. Pero ngayon, software na lang. Before, it was necessary for higher, highly educated people to analyze a firm's data and information to make it useful. Now that online analytic process, OLAP advert it has it has created a wide range of new possibilities in workplace structure. It also affects the hiring practice, organizational design, and productivity. Next, let me discuss about internet security. Internet security refers to the ability to send information and data, including voice, over the internet without fear of leakage, espionage, or outright loss. There is, no re there is no assurance that their data integrity will be maintained despite its movement around the globe in the servers, routers, and computers that make up the World Wide Web. Security systems today include pa proxy servers, password authentication, firewall, firewalls, encryption layering, certifi certificates, virtual private networks, open system interconnection, and external 
even national government have institutes law regarding data security. For example, the Indian IT Act of 2000, which addresses 1. Privacy-related issues. To define hacking and computer evidence, meron na din global international compliance benchmark to make include. First, BS BS seven seven nine nine is comprehensive set of controls of best practices in information sec security. This was published in February nineteen ninety five. ISP 17799 is internationally recognized information security management standard it first published in year 2000 next is health insurance portability and accountability act or high paa establishes standards for the secure electronic transfers of health data with this companies can now work with virtual worlds with the same level of security they enjoyed with physical walls. Lastly is business specialization. Pralahad and Gary Hamel called on businesses to focus on their core competency. They urge companies to develop a portfolio of core competencies around the customer they serve. Although, it will lead them to the idea that a business organization should be operate as few non-revenue producing units as possible. This, this is unlikely. In the early days of business, when the firm is small and everyone pitches in to do whatever is necessary for the business to succeed, it is easy to call everything as a core, even if it's not. Because we know market is more price sensitive and competitive. Additionally, as the business grows and the administration and overhead grow within, there are many things a business does that is expensive but not directly involved in revenue generation. So, it is necessary to understand the importance of business operation to our clients. We can provide them quality of service as well as operation of certain division to provide an outsource service such as, for example, is accounting and finance. They are responsible in invoice, billing, payables, management, collection, and etc. HR, HR services. They are responsible of recruitment, PMS, welfare, payroll, employer service, surveys, and etc. Data processing. They are responsible in claim processing, third party verification, content manager, content management. Next is marketing. They are responsible for marketing support, sales coordination, lead generation, etc. As well as customer service. They are responsible in voice and non voice based customer support. Sheila Tejano for your report. So the next presenter would be Ms. Bustamante and Jundi Carlos. So guys, ang uh, i-discuss ko ay BPO type. So bakit nga ba kailangan natin ng BPO or kailangan natin mag-hire pa sa ibang lugar? So kasi ang BPO nagbibigay siya ng advantage sa mga business para mapabilis yung operations nila. So ngayon, may tatlo tayong types ng BPO which is the offshore, the onshore, and the nearshore. So, ito yung unang type ng BPO. So, ayan, offshore. Ano nga ba yung offshore? So, the most challenging type of this relatively new approach to conducting business, but it is also the most potentially rewarding. So, ang sabi dito, yung outsourcing company ay located outside of the company's own country. Kunyari, from USA, mag-hire sila ng um, BPO dito sa Pilipinas. So, ayun yung offshore. Ito na. So, ang um, next naman natin is onshore. Ang sabi dito, many US companies are outsourcing back office function to American-based firm. So, ang binigay na example dito ay yung payroll outsourcing. So, it is managed by several large US companies. Automatic data processing or ADP provides a range of payroll administration services, timesheets and tax filing and reporting services. And, um, 
Based outsource, U.S.-based outsourcing firms must continuously innovate and seek new ways to provide value to remain in front. They are worth considering for services even if their costs are higher and strategic advantage is the goal of an organization BPO initiative. So, pag sinabi natin onshore, yung outsourcing company, uh, nakalocate siya sa parehas, um, kunyari sa USA, sa US din siya, pero uh, pwedeng different lang siya ng city, kunyari sa New York, o oh, yung iba na, yung BPO na i-hire nila is from ano bang mga ano natin, yung mga um, ibang city sa Nui, sa US din. Kunyari ng Texas, di ba? Ganon. Lastly, meron tayong pangatlo na ano, na types ng BPO, which is the near shore. So, near shore outsourcing is relatively new term that refers to the practice of outsourcing on the North American content. So, dito, ang pinaka, ang ibig sabihin ng near shore, yung outsourcing company na na hinahire ng isang company is located naman sila sa ano neighborhood countries kunyari dito sa Philippines di ba ang uh, i-hire natin kunyari is from Thailand from Vietnam so ayun yun yun yung near shore na tinatawag natin so thank you thank you miss Bustamante for your presentation so the next presenter would be Mr. Alhibe Michael John so good afternoon ma'am what I am going to discuss is the is strategic question to BPO or not to BPO. BPO has managers around the world asking not only what it can do for them, but also what it might do to them. So, yung pinaka main point dito ma'am is, ano yung pwedeng ma, ma itulong ng BPO sa kanila ngayon at sa near future. Tapos ma'am, they are excited about the potential for BPO to help manage costs and improve their balance sheet. So, pag sinabing balance sheet, ma'am, tsaka manage costs, um, ano matutulungan sila para um, para sa para sa spending decision nila? So, many leaders are also concerned about the risk of BPO. They are unsure about the information security issues associated with outsourcing back office processes. So, ma'am, yung um, sabi dito is, ano, syempre, alam naman natin pag sa ano, BPO, pagdating sa information, ano pinagpapasapasahan yan. Syempre, kapag pinag, ano, pasapasahan, hindi natin alam kung, kung ano, kaninong tao na pupunta yan at ano, maaari pa siyang mag tapos mag pa ng ano, hindi maganda. So, next is a business strategy, not a technology. BPO is based on the fundamental proposition that organizations should focus on what they do best and outsource everything else. For example, if a company markets and sells sporting goods, it should spend sustainably. Of all its time, doing that as a little time as possible managing its accounting, customer service, and employee benefit plans. Theory, the concept makes a great deal of sense. In practice, it still seems to invite a new set of challenges that may cause more than the problem it's supposed to solve. It is critical to point out that BPO is not a technology or a technology system. It is a business strategy. In that regard, to PBO or not to BPO is a question nearly anyone who's manager a business passes must not confirm. So the BPO option is a live one for anyone with a budget, limited resources, and a decision rights over a business unit. For some managers, the decision may even involve the continuous existence of their own departments in their jobs. Thank you, Mr. Michael Alhibe. So these are the presenters. And again, thank you for listening and I hope you learned something today. God bless.